today's discussion, we will discuss on the relationship of physical entropy with other branches of entropy. You have already learned that physical entropy is one of the main branches of entropy, the study of which mainly devoted to the evolution and human evolution of all time period from the dim remote animal ancestry to modern human beings in all parts of the globe, ranging from the coldest place like Barkoyangs to the hottest part like Azizian, through the analysis of fossils and observation of living primates, and closes a time to trace our ancestry and reveal how, why, when, and where we become a dispersing stage of evolution. Through body measurement and observation of visible traits like the colors of skin and the color and shape of eyes as well as examination of biochemical factors like blood groups, physical and phrases studies, the population of the world and explain what, why and how these variations among the human species. Attempting and answering to such questions calls for the interdisciplinary health and support from many scientists from other disciplines as well as specialists from the same disciplines like ethnographers, archaeologists and linguistic anthropologists. Now, let's try to see how physical anthropology is related with these main branches of anthropology. Number one, relationship of physical anthropology with ethnology. Ethnology studies about the customary ways of thinking and acting of different societies, recent, past and present. Ethnologists are experts who study about culture and culture science. Based on the trust areas of study, ethnology is also sometimes known as social and cultural anthropology and is divided into sub-branches like political anthropology, economic anthropology and cultural ecology, etc. These specialities are not mutually exclusive fields, but interrelated and interdependent fields. It may be mentioned that the two major branches of anthropology, social anthropology and physical anthropology, are interrelated branches. The question of studying anthropology without either one of the branches is ruled out. This is because of the fact that anthropology study humankind from two perspectives human beings from the dimension of biology and at the same time human being as a social being. This gives a total picture of we human beings from past to present. Let's examine how the two major branches are related. The study of evolution needs the knowledge of culture, that is, the learned set of rules acquired by man as a member of society. Because culture influences biology and vice versa, evolving to high complex brain, opposability of thumb, bipedal and erect pulsar, stereoscopic vision, has met tremendous impact on his culture. For instance, more degree of opposability of thumb in human beings enables to make and use tools and other dexterous activities as compared to other primates. On the other hand, his culture creating capacity also influences on his biological evolution. So for instance, the shape and size of our body and functioning of different parts of it, disease and infirmities are influenced by our diet, lifestyle and other cultural and practices. Cultural and practices such as rule of marriage prescribed by societies affect the gene frequencies of the society. For instance, in a society where near relative marriages known as consanguineous marriage are prescribed, the sciences of homozygosity of lateral genes to the offspring result to suspense is higher, thereby leading morbidity and mortality of the Mendelian population. Next, let's see the relationship of physical anthropology with archaeology. Ethnology study the recent people in past and present living population understand many sociocultural issues. Archaeologists, on the one hand, studies fragmentary remains 
a past culture on the basis of which they can only make inference about the custom of prehistoric people. One branch of physical anthropology, called paleoanthropology, studies about the collection and analysis of fossil like both distant and near ancestors, like we modern primates, Homo sapiens sapiens, and our artifacts, the cultural remains, like tools, weapons, and living sites. Excavations of such sites, preservation of findings, drawing inferences from such material remains, dating of the findings, need the expertise help of archaeologists, geologists, and geochemists. The inferences from the hard tissues, like bones and teeth, by comparing to the other past findings and present living primates, need the help of primatologists, one group of physical anthropologists who specializes in the study of primates. The contribution of this host of scientists help in reconstructing the evolutionary record of we human evolution. Next, let's try to see the relationship of physical anthropology with linguistic anthropology. Language is the vehicle of human communication from one individual to another, from one generation to the next generation. It is through this medium of language, culture is learned and socially inherited. The study of language and speech, language and culture, is known as linguistic anthropology. Physical anthropologists are also interested to the study of how language originated and evolved at the stage of evolution. The primatologists and ethnologists observed and experimented on primates, particularly higher primates like chimpanzees and gorilla. They compared the anatomy of space producing parts of human beings to that of lower and higher primates. They have attempted to train speaking to such primates. Linguistic anthropologists and linguists attempted to know how language originated. One group of theoreticians of grammar suggested there may be a language acquisition device in the brain exclusively innate to human beings, such as core systems or to animals. When our forebrain evolved, this device may have become part of our biological inheritance. The structural differences in human species organs, as compared to the species organ of baboon, apes and lower primates, were reported, supporting the view that because of science in brain and assuming of erect posture, human species is capable to only Homo sapiens sapiens. In this connection, Whitney Zanus writes, quote, the position of the human larynx stands as the foramen magnum forward on the base of the skull, and as the size of the mandible became smaller, the design of the larynx creates a long, uninterrupted resonating cavity. This tubular cavity makes possible the low-pitched piece of man, the faculty of human ear, for discrimination, probably evolved in close connection with the evolution of the vocal apparatus. This faculty is more acute at discriminating those pieces within the range of normal human conversation." Unquote. Another hypothesis of the origin of human language is related with tool making capacity of early ancestors of human beings. When they know how to make tools or varieties with hands, they might have not used hands as gestural language. Many enterprises believe that the Homo erectus use of more complex tools, control of fire, cooperation fire drive hunting with your fellows could not have occurred without some sort of spoken language. Primatologists and etologists feller at attempting speech training to chimpanzee whose DNA is 99% similar suggests that evolution and genetics are the determining factors of human species. These few examples illustrate the relationship of physical anthropology with linguistic anthropology. Next, let's try to see the relationship of physical anthropology with medical anthropology. Medical anthropology is a recently and rapidly developing branches of anthropology. 
This discipline emerges as a result of its significant role in encountering and intervening diseases, infirmity, and sickness of people, particularly those who are hardly or never touched upon by modern medical amenities. The main focal theme of medical anthropology are considerably perceived knowledge of health, its causes, diagnosis, and treatment. What is most important in medical anthropology is addressing and discussing health, disease, and sickness from both two paradigms, biological and cultural perspectives. Biological anthropological issues like occurrence of certain genetic disorders confining to an ethnic group or particular ecology in setup are also addressed. Therefore, it can be said that medical anthropology is a scientific exploration of the health and hair related aspects through an academic venture of holistic approach both biological and cultural, a biocultural synthesis. In order to understand the concept of medical anthropology in relation with physical anthropology, let us consider two examples. Example number one, preventive programs is the only means to control HIV apps is there is no cure for this infectious disease. Awareness and educational programs sometimes fail because of people's belief and attitudes about sexuality. For example, people in some Central African societies believe that deposits of semen after conception are necessary for a successful pregnancy and generally enhance a woman's health and ability to reproduce. Such people would choose not to use condoms, and condoms, in their view, may be attract to public life. Perhaps the most popular example of medical anthropology, showing the relationship of diet, disease, and culture in practice, may be the cannibal ritualism among the agriculture and poor speaking people in Eastern New Guinea. This group of people practiced human flesh eating ritual some years ago, when a near relative was that women who were relatives to the deceased cook the gram of the deceased and ate it up. Men were not permitted to eat a type of virus that had attacked the central nervous system of the people caused a paralysis like disease called Kuru, which was spread to the eating of such poorly cooked virus infected gram of their relatives through this ritual morning. The disease is confined mostly to women through the practice of this ritual though there were a few cases of infection to men and children through accident and eating of flesh. Later on, D.C. Gazdusak in the late 1930s and early 1960s detected the virus. The virus is now known as prion. Thus, physical anthropology is a vast discipline of anthropology that needs the knowledge of other branches of anthropology.